Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to continue with our uh, TASMOTA control series and we're going to develop a, another control panel and this is the control panel we looked at last time, very very simple control panel. We're going to develop a, another control panel and this is what we're going to develop and we're going to be using drop down boxes for selecting our sensors and our sensors are going to be um, dynamically generated and I'll show you that just in a second. Uh, before I do that though um, I did create this video on creating drop down boxes, dynamic drop down boxes um, as a um, prelude to this video so if you haven't done drop down boxes before uh, then I recommend you do have a quick look at this video before you continue with, it, with this one and I'll put a link in the description below this control panel is actually two control panels uh, and I wanted to show you both uh, in subsequent videos I will actually be concentrating on the one at the bottom but I just want to show you the, the one at the top uh, as well so we have a select sensor drop down box and we can select our sensor from here and when we select our sensor then we the, the topic goes to none so we're not going to use the group topic if we select our group topic then the sensor goes to none. So we can either have a sensor or we can have a, a group topic. And we've got a toggle button and we've got a power on and off. So we can either toggle the sensor or we can toggle or we can just turn it on or off. Now if I toggle this one it will toggle all the group of our sonoffs. If I select the sensor it will only toggle that particular sensor. Okay, so the one at the bottom, this, the control panel at the bottom, is this time we select the the group, and when we select the group, it automatically picks up the sensors that are actually in that group, and this is the one I prefer. So what we're doing here is we're driving a drop-down box from another drop-down box, and I actually mentioned that I'd be showing you that in that that previously do the one I I referred to, and say this is the one I normally use. So let's go and have a quick look at the, the flow. Now the first thing to note is that this, this control flow uh, depends on the actual Sonoff detector flow, this one here, and the Sonoff detector flow detects the, the sensors and extracts the sensor names from them, extracts the, um, the group topic names from them, and it basically sorts out what um, sensor is in what group. Then it publishes the results via MQTT, and I picked them up here uh, by subscribing to the topic admin star so I'm actually publishing on admin group topic and admin sensors. Now I didn't have to use MQTT to publish them I could have used a link in and link out node so I could have linked out from the Sonoff detector and I could have added a link in from the the control panel node or I could have actually used a, a global variable uh, to store the data and then I wouldn't have had to pass it between the between the flows. Now if you're running on the same machine you're definitely going to run on the same machine then I would use the link in link out or the global option if you're not sure and you may run them on different machines then you can publish them using MQTT which I'm I'm doing here now this function node here basically extracts the data from the uh, sensors and from the group topics and it creates the data for the drop down lists and it stores that data in a, a flow variable. You can see I'm setting the census flow and I'm setting the group topics one down here. And if I look over here at the data, you can see I've got a collection of flow variables. Now, I've got census lists and I've got group topics list, and this is what I'm using to drive the drop down boxes. Now you'll notice the presence of the ones all sensors and none. Now I'm not using the all sensors at, at present. Uh, I do use the the non variable, and you can see the way I generate those here. I use the options unshift and to insert them at the top of the top of the list. Again, we covered that in the the previous video. Okay. Um, the important bit of this flow here is this function node called send command and this is where I collect the data together and I store it in a variable called data. You can see this flow variable here. I'm storing the sensor, the group topic, um, 
that's uh, from a previous thing that will get deleted eventually when I, I reset the flow. Uh, stores the um, the group topic, the payload and the actual command and that is all coming from the control panel so when I change the control panel, so if I select the sensor to a heater and I go back and refresh that you can see here the sensor name is now heater. So I collect the data in this node and when I'm ready and when I've collected all the data I want then I'm ready I just go and, and click the send button and that sends it. Now just go with it back there's two of these uh, function nodes one is driving the bottom flow and the other one is driving the top flow. Now I'm not sure whether you notice but if you look at the power setting here it's on or off and if I select the sensor and go for main light you notice that changes so it basically picks up the current setting of the main light because the main light setting is actually stored in the a flow variable and if I look back here this is the node that does it this function node here and every second I inject into this function node and I use that function node to drive the on off switch here and if I go back to heater you can see it's it's on and you can confirm that by going to the display here and you can see here the heater is on and the main light is off. Okay so let's go back to this um, send uh, function node um, I use this technique in, in lots of flows so I'm going to take you through how it works now if we look at these these nodes here select sensor I use a topic called sensor and if I look at the power on switch I use a topic called state and the same goes for the other nodes that I'm injecting into here and if I go just finish off with the send and you can see here I've got a topic send now the topic is important to control uh, what happens in the in this function node so if you look down this function node you can see right at the end if I detect the topic send then I'm going to publish the data I'm going to return the message otherwise if I detect any other topic I'm just going to return I'm not going to return any data so basically the flow stops so let's go up here if I've got the topic toggle or the topic state then I store the command per one I'm only dealing with one one command at the moment in the in this flow and at the top if I detect the topic sensor then I populate the variable data dot sensor and remember the data variable is a flow variable I will store that in the the flow variable data and the same goes for group topic is covered down here and you see right at the bottom here I set the flow variable data so basically I use the topic to decide what I'm going to do with the actual message payload and how I'm going to store it and I store all of the data in a, in a flow variable and then once I see the send command then I know I can I can send the the data out there's no checks by the way currently in this flow or in, in, in this in this function node that when I send the data that the actual data is complete. Now before we s we see it actually working I just want to show you the um, the way we drive um, one drop down box from another drop down box so we're basically going to look at this bottom control flow and if I go to the flow itself we've got the group topics here this is the drop down box and we're driving the, these, these um, drop-down boxes by uh, flow objects. Here you can see the, the, there's a, a group topics object and there's a, a group topics list uh, array. And the group topics list array is used to drive this drop-down box here. So I can select the group topic from here. And when I select the group topic uh, as Sonos, then this function node here uses this uh, flow variable and it keys in on house sonoffs and it gets a list of devices or sensors in that group and it uses that list to populate that so if I 
chose command test motors then it would use this one here and you can see there in the function node I pick up the group topics which is this one here I set the constant group topic to message dot payload and now that's been passed in from the, the selection so when I make a selection the actual selection itself the value which would be as Sonos command as motors etc gets passed into the payload I pick it up here then I use it as the key into this variable here and set the options now the options is an array because here over here you've got an array and then all I'll do is set the message on options to options and I return the message and that is what drives the this drop down box here so we can see here and if I select then I have a different drop down so let's see it working. Um, the heat is on at the moment so if I just toggle it and it click the send button and then we can see the heat has gone off. Now they all belong to the same group water pump, outdoor lights, heater and main light and they're all currently off and they're all belong to the, the sun off so if I select the group topic sun offs and I toggle them all and hit the send button now if we go and have a look at them now we can see they're all on and I can do it from either one of these controls uh, control panels so we selected select them here we select none here it's important we select none here and then we click the send button I forgot to set the switch but the switch should be off and no it wasn't so let's set the switch and you can see they're all they're all off well that brings us to the end of this video now the flow will be available as a download now what I recommend you do is you rename it and you rename it to tasmota2.json it will be um, as a download Tasmata, Tasmota 2 uh, dot text, it has to be text otherwise the download manager doesn't like it but you need to rename it to JSON and then you can start it um, from the command line using known red Tasmota 2 dot JSON and that way it doesn't interfere with the stuff you've already got and it doesn't interfere with the, with the last project so you can keep these projects to totally separate uh, I recommend you do this because not only have I made changes to the control panel I also made changes to the detector and to the uh, um, simulator as well so I recommend you keep them all these project uh, downloads all, all separate and say you can don't as I say you can um, load them using this format here okay so that's the end of the video in the next video I want to talk about Tasmota messages and it's very important to understand the Tasmota messages um, because that's what we use to build these objects here that we use to drive the control panel and so if you like this video then click on the like button if you've got comments then please leave them below if you want to subscribe to the channel you, to receive notifications then uh, click on the subscribe button and don't forget there's a project page on, on the website that uh, contains additional material and it also contains a, a few questions uh, related to this uh, video. Okay, and until next time, goodbye.